Welcome to the Man Cave Podcast with Dan Casper. He is Dr. Austin Crow, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, joining us for the second time this week here. You guys, uh, you guys uh, ready for Durand, Arkansas tonight, Coach? Yeah, yeah, I think it should be a good game. I'm going to have to bring our A game as always in uh, conference play, but I think uh, if we do what we need to do, hopefully we can come out with a W. All right, so that should be a good one tonight uh, as well. Um, Well, first off, now that uh, we've gotten a a few more days of the Jordan Love kind of watch right now this week, Matt LaFleur doing maybe some gamesmanship, saying leaving the door open uh, for him to potentially play on Sunday, Yesterday, he uh, said on a team uh, team or on the team website with Larry McCarron that he would classify him as as day to day with that knee injury. Hasn't been at practice, but apparently he's been doing some mental reps uh, over there. The more now that since we've talked to you on Monday, uh, Austin, and, and the more that was kind of been leaked out in the media or talked about. Do you do you feel like it's a grade one, grade two, somewhere in the middle? What 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 have you changed? Maybe your thoughts, or is it about the same from what we talked on Monday? Yeah, I mean, the video showing that little pop in the knee, I mean, to me, it's unlikely it's just a, a legitimate grade one. Now, I think you and I have been texting. I mean, there is definitely some subjectivity to that testing. So, you know, if, if every surgeon assessed the knee, some might call it a one, some might call it a two. But long story short, I mean, it looks like there was at least a substantial injury to the MCL for the knee to pop like that. So if that's the case, my guess is he's going to have enough pain and discomfort trying to cut and move that he's not going to be ready to play. Um, but same breath i mean if he's able to do it i mean it's not dangerous per se it's just whether he can functionally do it i just think that given what we've seen it's gonna be unlikely i mean if he was feeling good he'd be running around doing drills so my opinion is it's a bit of gamesmanship um and he's not going to play but I, would i be absolutely floored no i wouldn't i mean mcls are things that people have the ability to sometimes push through and then of course that does open the door to like well who's the toughest who can play through it and it's, it's not about that i mean when these are painful you guys have difficulty cutting and moving and so if he's in the pocket and can't move and get sacked people will yell at him for being out there when he shouldn't so i mean you have to get him and he has to be able to protect himself i mean as we all know football is a, a sport that has some violence in it and so a guy has to be able to protect himself so to me if he's not able to run or practice he's not able to play a game that's just my, my simple thoughts on it yeah and i i know i've seen i know you and i were kind of texting about this back and forth but you know you got the keyboard warriors uh, that are kind of out there too saying oh, yeah. Well, Aaron Rodgers uh, did it in 2018, plus he had a broken tibia and, and, and such. But, I mean, it, everybody's different, right? I, I feel like we, we've said that a few times when it comes to injuries like ACLs and recovery times. Everybody's knee, in, in this case, reacts differently, right? Yeah, 100%. And I will tell you, Rodgers' injury previously, I mean, the, when you get a higher-grade MCL like that, so a two or three, usually there's a significant bone bruise. And people will often dub those as insufficiency fractures. So when Rogers said he had a tibia fracture, that's really not true. I mean, he had a bone contusion. Not to say those aren't legitimate injuries, but they're not. I mean, it's not like he really fractured his tibia. If that's the case, he'd be, you know, surgery or done for the season. So mm-hmm. sometimes people like to uh, embellish a bit, and I personally think Rogers is maybe one of those guys. <laughs> the saga of his Achilles last year. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that there there is a bit of that where people like to try to compare one injury to the other, but everyone's different. So that's why when you hear, you know, medical professionals talking about recovery, we give windows, right? It's not like you, you get injured and it's like, well, on Tuesday at three o'clock, this will be healed. I mean, it's just not the way it works. So there's a lot of things that go into it. And then really truthfully, there's a lot that goes into what a player does on the field. So position wise, and even within positions, their style of play. I mean, Jordan Love isn't a true scrambling quarterback, but we all know he does use his legs to extend plays, and that's part of his game. So for a guy like that to have really limited mobility, ah, that's going to affect the way he can play the game. So that's something that factors into it as well. So, I mean, again, it was a legit injury. We saw the video with that that knee pop. Something tore. That's the MCL. We know that. So I I just I would be surprised if he's able to come back and, and function. So, Players that want him to be tough and get out there, I think that you wouldn't like the product you see. I guess we'll put it that way. Right. Yeah. No doubt about it. There was part of me too that was wondering, and, and we won't know like the full details of it, but part of me was wondering too: does the timing of this, like in the, in the season, factor into it? Like, say this was week sixteen or seventeen, and a playoff game was on the line. You know, does could that potentially change whether he plays this 100%. week or not? Oh, Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have to look at what's on the line. I mean, if you if we aggravates it misses a couple extra games in the season that not that they're not going to be inconsequential every game counts but 
very different than a do or die playoff situation, right? To get in or a playoff game, people push through a lot harder things knowing they're not going to be hundred percent, but it's just, that's what they'll do. So timing makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Uh, so one question I, I brought up yesterday, I'm like, I got to save it to, to ask good Dr. Crow, kind of going back to, you know, the Aaron Rodgers thing or, or whatever, you know, obviously Pat McKenzie has been there for a very long time as, as team doctor mm-hmm. for, for, for the Packers. When it comes to situations like this, does does the relationship and the confidence or the trust maybe between the doctor and the player kind of come into play? So I guess, you know, what I was going at is like Aaron's obviously when, when he had his grade 2 MCL, obviously he's been around for a while. He has that relationship with Pat McKenzie. Maybe Pat McKenzie, you know, he trusts Aaron Rodgers to say if he can go or not. Does that does that fact you know Jordan Love still kind of new? I I know he's been there for a few years and such, but from a I guess from a doctor patient standpoint, does that trust factor kind of factor into how soon a player goes out on the field uh, at at this point? Well, I mean, I think there's always something to the you know patient physician relationship, and even though it's much more you know in the spotlight, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's still a physician treating a patient, right? It's just really you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big time, right? It's right. in the limelight. So um, I think that does play a role. Um, I will tell you, though, that players get second opinions. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Jordan Love did, did get a second opinion. Yep. Um, I think I saw one article talking about that. So even for an MCL, which is about the most straightforward knee injury you can have, um, he went and got a second opinion. So it's really – and we've touched on this in the past. I mean, it's a really interesting, you know, gamesmanship between players, agents, medical staff, um, and players often then get second, even third opinions on things that are, are a lot of times very straightforward. So this MCL, he's getting the same story from every doctor he sees. It's like, okay, you, you dinged your MCL. Presumably there's nothing else. Again, I don't have the MRI report, but that's what's been leaked and, and implied. Isolated MCL tear. It's going to be a, hey, let's brace it. Let's see how the knee feels when you can start running, jogging, and do it. And if you can cut and pivot, let's try practice and then play a game. I mean, that's what he's getting from every doctor. And so – they may spin it slightly differently, but at the end of the day, that's what he's going to get. There is no controversy in this one. So it's just, it is amazing to me that that's what happens. But really, you know, Bob Anderson, who was with the Packers for a while, um, I, he gave a talk to uh, my residency program at, at Madison when I was there, and he was just talking about how what really has undermined the physician and patient relationship or athlete relationship is the agents. They insert themselves and they try – you know, it's an effort for them to, quote, prove their worth. And so they'll try to be like, I can get you to go see James Andrews or I can see Neil Ella Trash or whoever the, the big-name surgeon is. And, and somehow that's going to get them better medical care. When at the end of the day, I mean, all, all the physicians, I mean, we, we train and learn the same things from the same people. It's very interesting. I mean, people think you go to see this team doctor. It's this doctor that has this, you know, wealth of knowledge that no one else does. At the end of the day, we a lot of us train at the exact same programs, which is very interesting. People mm-hmm. don't really maybe necessarily understand that or, or, or know that. But to that point, I mean, he came out and he got a second, maybe even a third opinion on, on something that's about as straightforward as it gets. Like having a scrape on your knee, be like, we should probably see two different doctors to see how you treat a scrape on the knee. It's like, no, you put a Band-Aid on it. When it heals, get back out there, right? That's, right. It, but it is, it is interesting. But to your point, yeah, I think there is something to that relationship and what that trust is at and um, if it's certainly if it's a more controversial injury where it's like, look, we're debating surgery versus not, that's when it really becomes like, do you trust their opinion? Do you trust what their viewpoint is? And, and that goes a long way in how decisions are made. Mm-hmm. He's Dr. Crow, uh, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, joining us here this morning. Fantasy football owners across the world are listening right now to try to figure out if they should start Christian McCaffrey <laughs> at, uh, at any point <laughs> in their time. I mean, you know, last Monday night he was a late uh, inactive, and they're calling it Achilles tendonitis. And, you know, Achilles, we've we've heard that one quite a bit in the last year or so. He did return to practice. There was a report that could be out for a few weeks, several weeks, but he did practice. What is the – when when we hear Achilles tendonitis, is there a concern, you know, especially the position he plays – that that could lead to a Achilles tear at, at, with, with that? There is a risk, absolutely. So um, there's been studies in the past that looked at ruptured tendons, so whether it's biceps, Achilles, quad, patella, any of them, where they did that time of surgery to take little pieces of it and send it to the lab. And look, there's almost universally what we call tendinopathy, which is essentially kind of like microscopic damage from repetitive overuse and, and kind of micro-degeneration of the tendon. So people who have tendonitis and inflammation that's, that's present, it definitely does weaken it. Now, is it like every person who gets Achilles tendonitis ruptures their Achilles tendon? Absolutely not. It's still a very uncommon event. And so I wouldn't put them at high risk. So 
does it weigh into decision-making? Maybe a little bit. Do I think that that's going to be what they're really worried about? No, I think they want the pain to go away so he, he gets his explosive step back. Because when it hurts, I don't know if you've ever had Achilles tendon ice yourself. I have. I mean, it hurts. And you lose that explosive step. And so when he's out there, I mean, we know that's his game, right? He's shifty, he's explosive, he has high top-end speed. Um, so for him to be able to play like that, it is, it is important that he's able to do that. So if his team, you know, the medical staff are watching him run, and he's just not able to do it. I don't think it's like, are we worried about a rupture as much as are we worried he's going to be the player he needs to be to get out there and perform? So in the back of their minds, yes, major decision part of it, and probably not. Mm-hmm. I know uh, this is more neurology, but obviously last night uh, with the game and, and Tua uh, yeah. suffering another concussion, and uh, I, I just blanked on you know when he had that with with the arms. What was what was that called again? With posturing, posturing. Yes, that's the second time we've seen him uh, yeah. go through that. So it I wasn't mean, as bad as the the last time. I mean, last time he sat with his arms locked in that position for what I mean seemed like a minute, but it was probably three yeah. or four seconds. But he clearly did it again. So. He, I mean, he was hit. He probably had a loss of consciousness, um, and it's a marker of, of a traumatic brain injury. Now, you know, that sounds horrific, and, and every concussion is, but, I mean, that's essentially that's the spectrum of traumatic brain injury is, is a concussion is in that spectrum, and, and he had clearly another one. So this is at least at least his third one that we know of. Mm-hmm. Um, last season it was back-to-back. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is the scary part of football when you have an athlete that's getting these recurrent concussions. Um, he's absolutely going to be in a concussion protocol, and they're going to look at him. You know, I've already seen on Twitter people being like, he should never play football again. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, first off, I'm not a neurologist or neurosurgeon, but we certainly do um, play a role in the concussion protocol and, and how we treat them. Um, but I, if I have patients that I'm counseling on this, it's like, look, I mean, you just have to look at the risk and benefit of everything, right? Every decision is that. Like, every decision we make in our life is a risk-benefit analysis. Um, for him, you start looking at how how prevalent they are, the severity, how long they last, um, and that's the short term. And what we don't really have a complete grasp on is the long term. Um, so, you know, it's is he going to end up suffering from long term issues? Maybe, maybe not. Certainly, not every football player has it. But people who have these kind of things, you just look at it and say, "Man, is it worth it to get back out there?" Um, and you know, I mean, someone who's dedicated their life to a sport like this to tell them no. Um, I, I'm guessing he could be cleared if he wanted to at some point. Not now, clearly. He'll have mm-hmm. to clear protocol, so that will take time. But it'll be I, – I promise you that decision is going to have to be made, and he's going to have some long discussions probably with his family, friends, physicians, et cetera, and say, hey, is it worth it to go back out there? But there have been guys who have come back from numerous concussions and, and been okay. Um, and when is that one too many? We don't know that. And – um, that makes it hard. It's, it's, it's easy if we have an ACL, we get an MRI and say, yep, your ACL graph looks good, get back out there. We don't have that for the brain. We can't do an MRI of the brain and say, yep, you're good, your brain is okay, go back out there and play. Um, so it's, and, it, and, it, and clearly it's just much more scary, right? I mean, yeah. a knee injury is one thing. You see a guy in the field who's un- clearly either unconscious or, or at least altered mental status and his arms stuck in the position. I mean, that's scary stuff. So we wish him the best, and, and it's going to be something we'll have to look at closely, and it's going to be – I could see it going either way. Um, you know, he, he's tough, but this isn't about being tough. This is about making the right decision for him and his family. Yeah, absolutely. Really quick, does the fact that he was posturing again, does that signal anything like it's – you know, because I can't remember the last time I've I've seen a player, like, posture twice in there. Does, does that, mm-hmm. you know, kind of factor into this too, or is that it, a little it, difficult? No, I mean uh-huh. – it does suggest that there's a little more severe. I mean, again, you're, you're clearly at that point either unconscious or, or close to it where he's – I mean, I'm sure he doesn't remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, it just indicative of the severity of the injury. Um, so, yeah, I think it plays a role. Um, and I, I agree. I mean, it, it's not often that we see that, but it, we, it does happen. I mean, we do see that in, in players who have concussions. So, I, I mean, to me it looks at in, in basically one calendar year he's now had three concussions. Clearly, two of them were quite severe, um, and and I, I think what really is going to have to be seen is how quickly he bounces back. So they're going to do a bunch of neurologic testing and see, and if he bounces back and feels good, I mean, it's, I don't think it's anyone's place to say no, you can't play. Um, if he has persistent neurologic symptoms, then that is in fact their job. So there there will be a team of neurologists and neurosurgeons um, that that do that. I have a friend who is who did that for the Denver Broncos. He's a neurosurgeon at the University of Colorado, and that's one of the things that they, they did. And I was just talking to him the other day, 
and he said it's a, it's a thankless job. I mean, the players don't like being told they can't come back, and so they don't like it, but he's like, we're trying to protect your brains, and it's a, it's a unique scenario where, you know, clearly it's in their best interest to be out, but these players are, are for lack of a better term, warriors, and they want to get back on the field, but you have to balance that whole, um, you know, head injury and return to play and stuff. So um, I, I think it's going to be a battery of tests and, and a wait and see for him. Yeah, man. He's uh, Dr. Crow, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Dude, big thanks again for, for joining us uh, here this morning and uh, and chatting with us. And, and best of luck tonight uh, and, and, mm-hmm. uh, and your quest to start 4-0, right? Looking to go 4-0. That's right. So Looking at it, keeping that streak going. Absolutely. Hey, appreciate it, buddy. Enjoy the weekend, and we'll catch up with you again soon, okay? Absolutely. Take care, Dan. You got it. Dr. Crow, Dr. Austin Crow, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine.